Jules, aka Julia. Um, I'm here with my really good friend Margaret, aka Megs, and this is our first floss tube. We um, just decided that we would get on and share a little bit about what we're working on and what we like to work on. We're knitters and cross stitchers and needle pointers and sewing and quilting and all kinds of stuff. Um, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota, and Margaret and I have known each other forever since college um, and keep in touch long distance mostly um, and share a lot of our crafts. So we thought it would be fun to share with others. I'll let Margaret introduce herself too. Hello, everybody. I am Margaret Mags, and I live in uh, San Jose, California. And Julia, like she said, we've been friends forever. We have so much fun with our projects and inspiring each other, enabling each other, pointing out all these things that we need to buy. So we thought we would share all of that goodness with you too. Yeah. So we thought um, for this first one, we probably would focus on just um, mostly um, knitting and cross stitch. Um, we also quilt and sew and or I should say also needlepoint, Margaret needlepoints too. So we'll share a little bit about that. Um, but we'll start with knitting um, and maybe just start with a little bit of what we're working on. You want me to go first? You want to go first, Margaret? Yeah, no, you go first. Okay. Um, so a little bit about what we're working on. So probably the main things I'm working, I have, of course, a million whips in process here, but um, a couple of the main ones I'm working on are... Um, and of course everything's all tangled. So this is, let's see if we can get this up there. Ooh. This is um, Flying Foxtail Wrap by Stephen West. And it's um, Brioche, which I totally got into. I think, what was that? Um, we did a, Margaret and I did a um, Andrea Mowry mystery knit along. Oh yeah, one of the, one of the plates. Years ago. Yeah. One of the and that's when I first learned brioche. So yeah, so that's what this is. And I just, it's just kind of at the beginning stages and it's super soft. I'm doing it in, um, uh, it's a fingering weight and then also a surrey, which is the first time I've been using a surrey, which is like super fluffy, really fun. So it's that color and then the, and then the dark blue. So Margaret, these are the ones, I got these in, um, when Margaret and I were at Vogue Knitting Live in New York two years ago, I guess it was, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, um, I think it's called Ching, Q-I-N-G, Ching, um, Melted Surrey in Siren, and then this is Wishbone Yarn Flax Flower in uh, You Don't Call. It's, oh, it's You Don't Call, You Don't Write. So, but yeah, so that's one of my, it's kind of one of the first things, or I've been working on it for a little while, I haven't been working on it uh, a lot lately. This is another kind of taking forever project, but it's really fun. Um, and I love the effect of it still, it's just knit and pearls, but it ends up having this really cool effect. So this is, let's see if I can get the colors right. Um, and again, it's just starting. So I'm just start, starting to fade into the second color here. So this is I Am Dragon 3 by Alexandra Davidoff. I think I'm saying that right. Um, and this is in Hedgehog Fibers. And one of these is the one you gave me, Margaret, as a gift. I think it's, it's actually this one that I'm knitting with, which is, um, I think it's called Occult, Occult. Okay, yeah. Is the medium one. And then there's a dark, a really dark graphite one. And then Cheeky is this light one. And it's um, my first time doing bead work. So. Oh, um, pretty. Yeah, there's some beads on there and um, they're pre-strung. This one is using pre-strung. Let's see if I can find the string. So you string them ahead of time. Oh, okay. And then as you need them, yeah. you grab them. Anyway, it's kind of a monster project and it's on, I think it's on ones or twos. So it's teeny tiny, but. It's, it's really fun and I love the effect of it. It looks really, really good. The beads are subtle. Yeah, they're really subtle. Yeah. I mean, they'll still, and they won't show up. The darkest color for this is, um, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, so this is the darkest color. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so it'll, it'll look really, I think it'll look really cool once it's all done. And <laughs> I wish, go ahead. We should have mentioned this at the beginning. We'll put all our notes in the, show notes at the, in yeah. the comments. So we'll have all the, all the patterns and all the yarn we're using. Um, and probably the, uh, the other main one I'm working oh, on right can now. I, sorry, can I ask a question about that one? Yeah, sure. Do you use short rows to get that like um, effect uh, or is it? I can't, honestly, I haven't worked on it for a while. Okay. So I can't exactly remember. No, it's not short rows, no. Okay. It's just, it's just, um, just the way you Increases and decreases. Yep, it's kind of easier to see on this side a little bit. Oh, cool! It's amazing. Yeah. The effect is amazing. I know it's a really cool effect to like get the little 
Yeah, like the dragon stick. scales. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah, and then um, I'll show this one. Margaret has a finished version of this. Um, we both did um, the most recent um, Stephen West mystery knit along, which was Substravaganza. And I guess when did that start? Last fall sometime? Yeah, October, I think. Yeah, so of course I'm not done. Margaret is done. And I should have gotten to the end of a row and I didn't, I left this, I left it off last night. So here's my <gasps> version of it so far. Ooh. Margaret will have the full version so you can see the full version. Um, That's pretty. Yeah, it's coming out. It's been really fun, don't you think? It has. It's like really fun to have all different, I've never done these little, um, Honeycombs. Honeycombs. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it's been really fun. So this is all, this is also yarn. I think we, I got when we were together at Vogue Knitting Live in New York two years ago. So this is Miss Babs Yummy Two Ply in, the, um, in a couple different colors. We'll, li we'll list them down below. But yeah, I think it's been, oh, I should say the gold is a diff, the gold is a um, different brand. That's Cosmic Strings, but everything else is Miss Babs. So. Love then it. you can see the full version when Margaret goes through her. I know. I can't wait to see them when you finish with the pops of gold. Like, I think that'll, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, that's a, I, it's a really fun, although I'm kind of, I know you said like once you get to the end and it's what, 900 stitches? Yeah, it took me about four hours to bind it off. Yeah. Crazy. All right, I'll show <laughs> one. Counting. Yeah, I'll finish, I'll show one finishing and then we can see yeah. what you're working on for knitting. So, um, so this one is my finish. It's, I still have to weave in the ends. So it's probably a little hard to see. So this is the Zelda crop. It has hair in it too. Um, let's see if I can get the colors a little bit better. So Zelda crop, and I did it in, um, in kind of these Christmassy colors. I think I saw Christy Glass had done a different pattern. I think one of um, a different pattern, and she had done kind of similar colors. And I loved kind of there's it's, it's a little hard to see in here, but this like aqua color. Yeah. Oh, and then this green, which actually had some aqua tones in it. Um, so it was, let's see, this is a hedgehog, I think. Let me look at my notes here. Um, pine. Kind of see if where I have it here. I think it's pine. Oh yeah, pine. Yeah, I think you helped me pick that one out, didn't you? Um, yeah, so that's pine. And then um, the green is a uh, Meadowcroft Dye Works. Rock Shelter Sock in Hypothesis, which I I really love this color because it's got some of the blue in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the other two are Madeline Tosh. So the blue and the uh, red. And the red, it's hard, a little hard to see maybe online, but it's um, sparkly. Oh, it's- Oh yeah, and then the bottom is really, the bottom is really pretty too. That you can see the aqua. The yeah, yeah, now you can see the aqua, yeah. Oh. And it's short sleeve, so that makes it even better. <laughs> But that's a super fun. I really, I still need to, I have steam blocked it. I need to probably wet block it to make it a little fit a little bit better, but it was super fun to do color work. I hadn't done color work in a long time and her pattern was really good as well. Um, super fun to knit. And, um, and I think, oh, you know, I, I remember I got this yarn right at the beginning of COVID when everything shut down and um, we're in St. Paul, but we're really close to see Stephen B, which Margaret's come to when she's been here his store, which is an amazing store in Minneapolis. And um, I think I just called them and just said, here's kind of what I want to do. And they helped pick it out. So it was really, it was cool. So it looks yeah. so good. I, you are, see, I don't have, I don't know. I'm scared of color work. Well, no, oh maybe God. not scared, but I just, maybe that's not what, how I want to spend my time. Yeah, I know. Well, and I, like I, once I finished that one, I was like, okay, I don't, I'm ready to go back to, it's funny. Cause like all the different techniques, like after I finished that, then I was ready to do something else. Yeah. So, um, all right. So what are you working on? Okay. So I used to be, um, I used to have like 27 whips at a time. And now I have kind of changed to be a more monogamous knitter. So I really only have one thing going right now. So this is also, I'm on a big Stephen West kick. This is Chevron shenanigans. I have two colors here. Hold on. They're all tangled. So Chevron shenanigans. So another kind of fade and it starts here. Like it starts at this little part here and then it slowly is growing with short rows. And so. I love that. I, that was on my list for a while. And then I can't remember, I got distracted. 
Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, there's so many good patterns. I love that one. So it's finally, I'm on, it's, um, I'm doing the large size. It uses five colors. So um, it started with that peachy color. I'm on my, this is my third color. So it's starting to turn a little darker. Here's the fourth color I just started adding in. And then this is my last color. Pretty. So it's got, I think, 20, like 22 different wedges. Um, like wedges are kind of sets of short rows. And so okay. I'm on about number 17. So I'm getting close and it's, it's getting long. Like it's barely. So do you still go back to the beginning and knit or how does that work? So you start over on this side and that, no, sorry. You start over on oh. this side. Yeah. Short row to here. And then you go back and then you short row to here. And then you go back and you short row to here and you go back. Gotcha. So that's why this side is growing so much more than this side. I love those colors. Are they all the same brand of yarn or what's the brand? Oh, so um, I have hedgehog in here. I have, I think the peach is hedgehog or no, the peach is the very peach at the bottom is uh, I think, uh, the Ching fiber Q Q -O -G. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. So I think you are, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, then I have hedgehog. Then I have um, Countess of Blaze. That one. Yeah, and then and I'm I'm just the good thing is it's short rows, so if I run out, it won't. It'll be okay. Oh, it fell. Yeah. Because I'm getting, I still have two repeats to do with this little ball, but I think it. I think I'll have enough. And even if I don't, then I'll just keep going with my fourth color. So this is the Countess of Blaze. This is. And I think the last two are the Ching fiber. Cool, I love it. Yeah, it turn, it's, I, it's turning out well, pretty well. And I was excited to get to the darker. You do, I feel like it has so much peach of the lighter color. And now we're finally getting into the yeah, dark. Yeah, now you're really gonna see the dark. Yeah. You can see my little assistant in the background here. <laughs> my I love it. assistant is gonna be very jealous. I know. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, we have two nine-year-olds who are gonna, who really want to be participating. Yes. Okay, so that's really all I have going on, although I'm itching to start other things. Oh, see, so you're better than me on the knitting. I'm hoping that it will, you know, that not starting something else will motivate me to finish this. Yeah. Okay, so then my only finished is Stephen West Slip Stravaganza, and this thing is, is big. That is awesome. I mean, big. Wow. Yeah. That looks so oh. good. I love your colors too. This, um, it's always kind of nerve wracking, I think, when you do a, uh, a mystery knit along, right? Because you don't know if you're going to love the pattern or not. So I was really debating when I was picking my colors. Do I use colors that I really love? Right. Or do, I mean, or do I do something that eh, if I don't like it, it's no big deal. And this kind of like rusty color, my that's like my accent color here has mm -hmm. like pink a little bit. And this is from um, Olan in Ireland. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, I loved it in this in the cake or skin. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I yeah. loved it. So I was really debating like worried yeah. not to use it, but I did. And I think it's, I mean, it's very neutral, but I think it adds oh, I love bright, it. brightness. I love it. It looks really good. And there were, two, I haven't gotten to the end yet, so I don't know. Like there's two choices to make it bigger or smaller, right? Yeah. So I think what happens is if you do the bigger version, you have like another set. Oh, geez. So this is the small version. It is the small version. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you have more of another round of these. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. Now you're motivating me to finish mine. And like you said, it was really fun. It was a lot of different techniques that I've never, you know, never done before. And yeah. who knew you could do this much with slip stitches? I know. But it was like not, um, um, I mean, it wasn't totally brainless, but it also wasn't like super like color work where I have to really pay attention. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, it was it was kind of the right amount of like keeps you engaged, but you know, but you could still watch some TV and yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, overall it moved pretty fast till you get, you know, till you get down to the end. And then 
I mean, like I said, I knew it was going to take me forever to do the I cord bind off. So I sat through two movies and just got it done. Right. That's my favorite bind off though. Now that I cord bind off, you know, it, it look, it just really finishes it. The whole thing. Yeah, it makes it look All so good. Around, right. He, I mean, his creativity is amazing to me. And then I did his weave in Steven technique to yeah. for the ends. So what a relief to not have any ends to weave in. I mean, you just kind of, you can see end. Yeah, end. we should, we'll for sure link that below. That was a really, I, that was the first time I had used that technique as well. And it, and it makes it, yeah, you don't dread the end. Oh my gosh, it would take you forever. I mean, it would take such a long time. Look at how often you're changing colors. Right. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you had to weave in all those color changes. And then- so cool. Sometimes you can carry them up the I cord, but then your I cord gets really. Yeah, okay. I'm not good at carrying. Yeah. So this is. I love it. I can't. Oh, it looks so good. Put it on. Yeah, it looks. So really I just good. I um I finished it in early December, and then I just blocked it yesterday for today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks good. Thank you. Awesome. What's that one on the back though? You got you got one in your back there. You should show that one. So I think this was a COVID purchase. Um, this is uh, Beata from Hedgehog Fiber came up with this skeleton, skeleton shawl. I love so that one. it's brioche with like chunky, her, her chubby, her, um, hedgehog chubby in the black and white. It's called Undyed. And then um, I held a DK that's Olan. That's the orangey, yellowy, pinky one. And then I oh, have it with a pink, like a light pink too. And I'm telling you, this went fast. It was fun. It's also huge. I also have short arms, so that doesn't help anything. <laughs> but it's so warm. Even yeah, that'd be perfect for Minnesota. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I've gone soft. So, of course, in Northern California now, I need um. Yeah, yeah you need it. Yeah, but I ha hang it on my chair as a just kind of so I see it all the time. Otherwise, these things sit in drawers and I know, cabinets, right? I love that one. And the other thing I was thinking we should link below is um, I think I don't know which if, if you have any other recommendations, but for brioche, um, I had never done before before Andrea's mystery knit along that we did a couple weeks or a couple years ago. Um, and I thought her videos were really good. And I know Stephen West also has some brioche videos that are really, really good. And it's really not as hard as it looks. No. I know some people are scared of it, but. I actually think this is a really great project to start with because there's just, there's just increases every yep. couple of rows. And, and it's easy to see, you can see um, the stitches really easily. Yeah, mm -hmm. it goes so fast too. I love it. Yeah. That is so pretty. Huh? Yay! I forgot to mention I'm wearing um, this one I finished la uh, last year. This is Renunculus. I can't remember if we talked about this one, but um, so this is Renunculus, which is a, a top down, super easy, great first sweater, which I, actually may be my first sweater because I never finished anything. <laughs> it was super easy. It's knit on like pretty big needles. And, and there's some versions that are really um, kind of hard. To, this is also doubles as Lego land in here. <laughs> But yeah, it was super easy and um, really fun. And I did it in um, in uh, Magpie Fibers Swanky DK, so it's really soft. Um, and this uh, this color is called Masquerade, which yeah, I just it was a really fun, easy like the yoke is it, it like has a good effect again of like some different stitches to give you a nice effect, but not hard. Right, it's pretty. It's yeah, really and then it just goes really easy, just knitting knitting in the round. So. Yeah. Wait, anything else for knitting we have to chat about? I don't think so. All right, should we move on to cross, or do you want to do needlepoint? Sure, or, sure. Then we can talk cross stitch? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to convince Julia to um, to try needlepoint. I actually got a kit for her, for our kids, and I think they're having fun with it. I think they are too. I can't get sucked in. I got so many other things. Oh, I know, I know. Well, because it is a total rabbit hole. So, um, this is a Christmas needlepoint that I am working on. I started it two Christmases ago. Oh, pretty. And so I'm doing all different kinds of stitches. I'm using some beads in here, different types of threads and everything. It started with this, um, this stitch that I saw for the dove. 
So there's um, needlepoint.org and all these different places have, have um, stitches of the month and everything. And so I found that stitch and I'm doing that in a cotton. I have metallics. I mean, I got a little bit of everything in here. I know it looks really, I was wondering like, cause I, since I don't know needlepoint at all, how you know how to do all those different stitches. Well, um, I don't really know how to do it. <laughs> For me, everything is trial and error. So I have done a lot of stuff and then I've ripped it out. Mm -hmm. Like I was doing this, um, this snowflake and I had like all the red was done in beadwork. And then I decided it looked a little too messy. And so I, you can't really even see. So I pulled it out and did a different kind of thread on it. Really but a lot of there's um, actually Bill, my husband had bought me a stitch book that, and it has like, if you want to do background stitches, these are all the suggestions. And then sometimes I'll go, I have a needlepoint store not too far from here in um, Los Altos, I think, uh, Old World Designs. And they gave me a suggestion like for the background stitch, cause it's a little open. It's not, um, it's not like every stitch gets filled in. Mm. It's and really it pretty. Provides, like a nice texture, so. I don't know. I'm about halfway. I love it. And the beads. Well, so pretty. Yeah. So it's really fun. The, the advantage to me of needlepoint over cross stitch is that you're just like coloring. Right. So, I mean, I'm using different stitches and I do sometimes have to refer to charts, like especially for the dove, but it's a little easier because I just have to do what's on my, on my. Right. Uh, yeah. You're not having hand. to pay attention to a chart. Right. So that's kind of when I'm looking forward to when I want to do something and I don't want to have to think about it too much, right. I can do this. And then a lot of times there's like a, for canvases, you can get stitch guides, like um, some place, some stores will help you make a stitch guide for it. You can also just do the traditional needlepoint stitch over the whole thing. And it would also look equally beautiful. Yeah, it's really, I love that pad. I love it. It's like really modern. and Yeah. So this is, I think, Mod Dove by Maggie Co. And um, I just love it. I really do. So. And then you'll frame it, you think? Yeah, I think I will mm -hmm. frame it. Yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah. So that's a fun one. And then when we were traveling, we um, we took our air RV across the country to go visit our family safely at Christmas time. And as it turns out, in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, we were driving driving back from a hike, and I was just kind of spacing out, and I see this needlepoint store. Of course. It was a mile from where we were parked and it was the only needlepoint store in New Mexico. And when I travel, I do like to buy a needlepoint as a memento. And then I have a wall of needlepoint, travel needlepoints. So I, I went in the next day and I got this little guy. This is a oh, petroglyph. Yeah. So when in New Mexico, they have these petroglyphs, which are these Indian drawings that are 700 years old. And it's crazy how many of them there are. I mean, in a way you're like, is that graffiti? Is that real? Like, how can it still look so good? But they're real. And so this is my travel one. I love it. Yeah. So this, I'm just doing traditional coloring in the whole thing. And it'll, will it just be black and white or other colors? Yeah, just black That's and cute. white. And I'll do, I'll do like a border. Or, I mean, I'll, I'll fill in the background mm -hmm. and then I'll get it framed. So this is just like an easy when I don't, when I really don't want to have to work too hard with the brain. Yeah, I love it. I know that's such a good idea. I love trying to, when we go back to traveling, try to get things like, yeah, yarn or knit, like it's so fun to visit craft stores, other places. Yeah, yeah. Especially they, a lot of times we'll have stuff up on the walls, right? So you get inspired. Right. Yeah. So right. those are the two needle points I have. All right. Should we talk cross stitch? Yeah. All right, let me get organized here for a minute. All right, so. Um, Wait, I think we should start this by saying that cross stitch, we can blame on you. <laughs> yeah, totally. I know, I totally got stuck. I, I hadn't done cross stitch probably for 20 years, at least. Yeah. At least. And somehow I must have happened. So yeah, we'll start with what, um, and we both did this one so we can show both of ours at the same time. Yeah, um, yeah I can't even remember. I think we um, happened across, I happened across an Instagram caterpillar cross stitch um, yeah. and she's in the UK 
And um, she was doing, I, I just thought her stuff was super cute. And then at that time, this was at the beginning of COVID, kind of yeah. towards the beginning of COVID, she was starting a new stitch along called Positivity Rules. And so I sucked Margaret in. And um, so this is my finished one that we just finished. We finished it last year, I guess. So, and I am an, I found, I found, I, Margaret and I were talking about this. I, I still like just to stitch on Ada. I just can't get my eyes wrapped around even weave or linen or, I just like to do Ada and it's easy. And um, it keeps me, you know, I can do it at night. Oh, yours came out so cute. I love it. Super cute. Yeah. And so, and yeah, and I just did a little bit of sparkly thread up here. Oh, pretty. And then, oh, I think we both added the kitties. That wasn't in the original one. Yeah, but. so Julia did the, Julia added the kitties. Now I have a kitty and then a dog. Oh, you added, okay, cute. So the bigger one is, you know, Casey. Casey, yeah. Little. Oh, it looks so good. And she's awesome. She does a great, like they have a, they have a, she has a Facebook group, Stitch Along Facebook group. So people help each other out. Very like super helpful. Her stuff comes super fast from the UK. I'm still waiting for my, you got your new kit. Oh, you're still I'm waiting. waiting too. Okay. Yeah, so maybe I'll show some of my other ones. So this is the one we did. This is last fall. I just finished um, the Christmas one, which is, um, it was called Hello Dear. So that's this <gasps> one. Oh, it looks so good. And it this looks one I did, so it's kind of, again, it's hard to see probably on there. It's a little bit of a sparkly Ada opalescent. Um, and this is, so she has another one that she uh, um, had already called Hello Pumpkin, um, obviously a fall theme. And then she's gonna do a spring and a summer this year. So I have Hello Pumpkin, I bought that one to do. Um, but yeah, super, I mean, just so fun. And the, I love the colors that they're not like, I mean, it's Christmassy or holiday-y, but yeah. not crazy. I like how it brings in the blues, a little bit of the blues. Yeah, I love the blues, yeah. yeah. And this one, I was going to say about her kits. I mean, she, so, and I ordered her kits. Um, yeah. She's so generous. Like this is all my leftover threads and everything comes, she has them on these cards. So it's already pre-sorted and everything. And this is everything I've left over still from Hello Dear. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, she's super generous with her threads and her kits are super cute. And she has the cutest needle minders. Um, let's see if I can find the Hello Dear one because it's on another one. That I'm working on. Yeah, here's the one for Hello Dear. This was so cute. This little Robin. And then this is the one from. Oh yeah, Positivity, Positivity Rose. Yeah. Cute. I didn't get that one. And then Margaret and I are just about just to start. So you haven't gotten yours yet, right? I haven't gotten it, but I okay. printed out my pattern. I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready. Okay, I'll show it quickly. I just yeah. started it last night, so. The newest stitch along that she just started yesterday, I think, was when we got our first. So when you do these stitch alongs, she just emails the clues each month, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the colors for that one. I love the colors. Super bright and cheery, which in a Minnesota winter is really fun. <laughs> um, and it's, the, at least the kit came with a, you know, kind of a darker, this, the, I did, this is the Ooh. 16 count Ada. Okay. And it's going to be this way. And this one is called made to create this is a little stitch or the needle minder for that one. Oh, cute i don't know if we can see it it's... oh yeah there it is made so cute um yeah and it's all about yeah different crafts and different um i get yeah i think it's just crap i mean there's in this in the first clue there's a puzzle piece and a camera and this is a needle and a thing a tube of paint so i think it'll be fun I think it'll so. be perfect for our craft rooms. Yes. So that's Caterpillar. I think she does so, does such a good job, like with all her. I don't know the kids, and like I said, I think it it comes fast. She's super helpful, all that. So then I've gotten sucked in. I think so. One of, and one of the reasons we even started this, I started watching um, Shiloh's, uh, who is her um, YouTube channel, which is Crest, and her or her Instagram is also cross stitch or X stitch MD. And so that's kind of how we got thought about doing this. Even she kind of inspired us to do this. And so in watching her, I kind of got um, inspired or enabled, I should say, because she talked about a couple of these new other stitch alongs. So this is the, let me get my notes here. So I say the right things. Um, this is the modern folk embroidery. 
um, stitch along. So it's called the Fruits of Plenty. I just started it. Let me take the needle finder off. So I, I literally just started it and it's gigantic. Oh my gosh. It's um, and it's going to be, let's see if I took out, let me see if I can find. So it's not a mystery. You know what you're doing. Um, but it's huge. I like, I have this thing all these little, um, what are these wonder clips? I put all wonder clip together cause it's gigantic. Um, but let me see quickly if I can find the picture of it. I don't know if I brought it up here. I might not have looked up, but we'll link it below. Anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. So I'm really excited. I'm doing, um, this was in his example, one of his examples, he showed these two colors. Um, so it's a light blue and a dark blue. And he has, um, you could do it monochrome, which is a um, slightly fewer stitchers, fewer <laughs> stitches, or you could do it in two colors. So I'm planning mostly two color, but there are some pieces of it that I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna do kind of the monochrome version of it. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'm just getting started on it. Anyway, it's, it's gonna be fun. It's really, I love all the little motifs. It's really, really beautiful, so. And then um, the other one, this was um, another one. I've never done black work. So I saw this was, I can't even remember how I happened upon this. I think it was on Facebook, a Facebook group um, where she does a weekly black work stitch along every year and it's called Peppermint Purple. And so I just started this one. Um, let's see if I can show that one. Ooh. So every week is a box. So this was week one, I'm working on week two. I gotta do week three as this week is here. So each week she just posts in the face. And so this one is free. This one's totally free, the patterns. Yeah. Um, and it's just in Facebook, in a Facebook group. And so she posts and she had two different versions that you could do. So I'm doing the square version. I'll just show this real quick. So this is like, and she, everything's oh, posted cool. on Facebook. Yeah. And you can just print it off. And then there was a rectangle version, which I don't think I printed off, but um so you can pick which kind of how you want to do it and then she has all kinds of different border choices that you can do oh, which I can't I haven't decided yet because I'm trying to decide I don't know how intricate I want to get depending on yeah anyway and then this is I've also this is the first time I'm using the sulky thread so it's um a sulky 12 weight it's probably a little bit hard to see it's it's called blendable so it's a variegated um in purple it's called grapevine grape grape wine grape wine anyway it's it's really fun it it's looks like, and it's really pretty and it's super doable to do just one little week yeah. yeah you know like I can actually stay on top the modern folk embroidery I'm not sure I'll probably stay on top of because that is a huge project when you get your stuff out I'll grab the picture of it so people can see yeah. and then also Shiloh enabled me to start the other one I started which I, I literally have just a few stitches so I won't even show it is um the Vienberg winter Quaker mystery stitch along so that's another monster one that looks really, really fun. It's a lot, like so far, it's a lot of snowflakes and whites. And um, so I'm super excited for that one. The, but the, I think one of the first pictures they showed had a little fox on it. And so that kind of got me. Oh, cute. Yeah. So those are kind of all my, it's a lot of cross stitching. It is a lot, but it's fun. It's what totally else are you fun. doing this winter? I know, exactly. Yeah. Winter, COVID, Minnesota. So it's a good, it's good to have lots of projects. So I'll let you chat and I'll, I'll find the example or the picture for. Okay. So, um, I'm anxiously awaiting the arrival of my made to create, uh, stitch along so that I can get started. I have, I have the pattern. I'm ready to go. Okay. Um, so watching Shiloh and, and, and Julia, um, turning me on to all of this, I went shopping through my stash. So I did a lot of cross stitch. I'd say like in the early 2000s, I, I found a box of finished work that I haven't framed. And I was very busy and stitched a lot in 2004, apparently. And I bought a lot of stuff and then I never, I mean, I put it away. I haven't done it for years. So I went shopping through my stash the other, uh, a couple days ago and I found oh, this one, this, um, this kit by Rosewood Manor Summer Quakers and it came with the the, the, um, the threads and I had purchased the fabric too 
And I got this when I was in uh, on vacation in Ocean City, Maryland. There's the cutest little cross stitch store on the boardwalk in Ocean City. And um, I go there when, well, we used to go there every year when we lived on the East Coast, we went there every year. And so every year I bought stuff that I didn't stitch. Anyway. I love that one. Watching Shiloh do all those, um, you know, the samplers, I was kind of like, huh. A lot of them are very traditional, which is not exactly my style, as you can see back there. But this one in my stash, like this is. I love, colorful. I'm super tempted to get that one and uh, get, I mean, I like all of them. Yes. So there's a whole, the, all the seasons. I just have the summer so far, soon to acquire the rest of the seasons. And I just started it. My birthday was just last week. So I treated myself to a start. Okay. And that's what I've done so far. It's kind of hard to see the bird. Really pretty. Is that um? red. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. It's a, is it like a kind of a creamy blue fabric? The fabric actually is more like rosy peach. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. It does look kind of blue in, in some of the light, but it's more of like a rosy peach fabric, hand dyed. I mean, it's like that in itself. I should have probably ironed it. But anyway, just started that corner. Love it. Fun. Love it. So I'm really excited it. to work on that one. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. And then I pulled out a project that I started, cross stitch. I don't even know what year I started it. We'll go with probably before 2010. And I put it away because it's kind of a big one. It's so pretty. And this is April's Blue Diamond Fairy by Mirabilia, I think. Oh, and it's so big. Good. Like, we still have all the rest of her dress. Then she has these flowers at the bottom. Gorgeous. But honestly, I mean, I have not worked on it in, in at least 10 years. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So I pulled it off. I had it on um, stretcher bars, and I pulled it off because... Um, you can even see like the linens gotten a little aged, a little yellow at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So don't leave your stitching for 10 years. I don't recommend, I really don't recommend it. I also found like little stains up here in her wing and down here. So I kind of washed it a little bit to try and get it out, but that's, that's what happens when you leave yeah. something for so long. Yeah, but it's helping um, you finish your unfinished work. I know. So I'm excited. Let's see if I have the picture of it because it's really a beautiful, oh, here it is. This is like the, fin the oh, that is fin gorgeous. It has a lot of bead work. So like all this stuff down here is beads floating from her thing is beads. Wow. And it's like turquoise, aqua blue. I can't get the color right. It's really pretty. Yeah, so I'm actually, I'm excited to do, to start to work on it again. Yeah, did it come with all the beads and everything? It, um. No, I think I had to buy it. I, all I all I got was you get just get the pattern. Okay. And I used all their recommended. I think it's DMC floss, whatever the beads are, and then it's on a it's on a linen. Mm -hmm. It looks it's like so also pretty. really small linen. So this is daytime with my glasses kind mm -hmm. of stitching. Exactly. Yeah. I know it's so pretty though. It'll be fun to see how that comes out. I think I think so. Um, you know, the other thing too, is your taste changes, but right. I think it's still, I still like it. Yeah. 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 Fun. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll show this real quick. Cause it's just, I finally got it. So this is the month one pattern. Wow. And this is, um, yeah. So there, there's different versions that you can kind of do, like I said, either one color or two color. And then this is the, um, is the whole and this is on his website wow so it's gonna be a it's a monster but it's super fun i really i think his work is beautiful yeah it's really really beautiful so and like you said just kind of different that it's so different than the caterpillar stuff that we're doing yeah. so it's kind of fun to have like sometimes i want to knit or sometimes i want to stitch on that and sometimes i want to do more that like tons of color you know yeah stuff so i think that's all i had I'm trying to think Anything else that you had? Nope. Those are the things that I pulled out. Yeah. So we hope that you kind of got a little glimpse of what we like to work on. 
And our goal is to keep ourselves motivated and held accountable by doing these. We're thinking maybe every two weeks. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm sure we'll get better at this as we go along. It's kind of hard to, it's a little weird to talk into the cameras and yeah, yeah. talk about everything, but um, we hope you enjoyed it. And for sure, if you have any questions, let us know. And we'll link everything we talked about in the show notes. Yep. And I think that's it. Bye. Till next Bye. time.